What is up guys, Bronze Tech back. I'm gonna be doing something a little bit more different, showing you guys how I repaste my laptop. So this specific laptop is the Zephyrus G14 from 2023 with the RTX 4060 and Ryzen 7 940HS, I believe. So this one has the QHD panel and 16 gigabytes of onboard memory. So definitely have to upgrade it sometime in the future, but um, the reason I haven't been reviewing that many laptops is because of this bad boy. There's not much competition when it comes to finding a portable gaming laptop. I know some of you may not like the 14 inch form factor, but I definitely got used to it. I do like the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Um, I'll do a dedicated review, so don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for that. And then also potentially I'll be reviewing some other laptops and some keyboards in the future. All right, so first you have to remove these 11 screws. Actually, four of the top ones are actually longer than three of the bottom ones. So make sure you organize your screws accordingly. And also there are three screws where you have to remove the sticker. I didn't show it here, but yeah, remove the sticker so that you can get access to these three middle screws. So once you're done with that, disconnect the battery. Make sure that's the absolute first thing you do before working with any internal parts of a laptop. Then you're gonna remove two stickers that actually hold the heatsink and the fan together, one on each side. There are three screws that hold the fan down on each side, so six near the fans. There are eight screws that hold the heatsink down. Keep in mind the, the one with the sticker on it that is going to void your warranty. I'm not sure if you can order a brand new heatsink online with this sticker, but yeah, it's, it's worth double checking if you want to send it back to ASUS. So it was a little tough to get the heatsink off, but I managed to take it off because the things that will block you are the wires on the left and right hand side. So make sure that the wires on that right side are free of any obstructions and you'll be able to pull off the heatsink. It's going to have, there's going to be some blockages at the top. So pull it in towards you and out and you should be able to take it out easily. Keep in mind, this is liquid metal on the CPU, right? So Make sure that none of the liquid metal drips onto the motherboard, okay? So as we can see from the factory application of the liquid metal, it actually spilt onto the chipset, I guess what that's what you call it. It's, on, it's the sides of the uh, CPU. It's not the actual die, but the liquid metal actually got onto the chipset side. So. Luckily, it was covered by tape, and I think it's fine if a little bit gets through, but you want to do as much as you can to clean up all that liquid metal that's spilt on the side. And then keep in mind that there are blocking, there are uh, preventative measures that ACES did to make sure that the liquid metal doesn't spill onto the motherboard. You could see that they add foam onto the heat, heat sink and stickers that actually catch any excess uh, liquid metal. I'm not going to reapply any thermal goop onto the VRM and other chipsets, but uh, I'll just keep those as is. I don't think it will have much impact on performance, but I'm sure um, that if you apply a brand new uh, paste, make sure to get the correct kind. I'm going to use I'm, I'm going to use this Cooler Master uh, thermal paste, which I saw has some pretty high specs on it, so. I'll leave a link in the description below and then I also use Conductinot as well which is my go-to for liquid metal applications.
So once you're done with that, put everything back the way you removed it. And yeah, it was a pretty simple install. Make sure to cross pattern your screws uh, so that you can get even tightness and around the heat sink and then put the stickers back and don't forget to just reconnect the battery. <laughs> so that's it guys, pretty simple installation. Overall, it took me about 30 minutes. So I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, CPU temperatures for this, this laptop, it's always gonna be bad no matter how well no matter how well you uh, repasted your laptop with liquid metal, uh, I definitely recommend using G Helper so that you can set a temperature limit to whatever you want. I chose 90 degrees, and you can also undervolt your CPU. I chose negative 25 millivolts, so that helped in increasing multi-core performance. But uh, as far as temperatures, there's no way you can get a default good temperature with the way that this laptop design is made because you know it's a really high performing cpu along with a small chassis so i'm not surprised that you can't get under 90 degrees uh, when it comes to full load so go ahead and use g helper uh, i'll leave a link for that and there's plenty of tutorials that you can find online about using g helper Definitely recommend, I've been using it for about a couple months now over the Asus Armory Crate software. And yeah, I think that you're definitely going to, to have benefits uh, as far as making sure that cooling is optimal. And then the GPU temperatures actually went down about eight degrees. So I'm really happy with that. Really happy with Cooler Master's uh, thermal paste. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.